Welcome to the Colegio Mayor de Nuestra Señora del Rosario, located in the heart of the historical quarter of Bogota, Colombia. It has also been opened to the public as a living university museum, the Museo de la Universidad del Rosario, where the academic community and visitors interact with the cultural and historical heritage of one of the oldest and most prestigious universities in Colombia. Overlooking the front entrance is the symbol of the university and it is known as the Calatrava Cross, the university's legendary coat of arms carved in stone. This building is known as a cloister. It's a two-floor construction with a square layout that was built according to the norms of the colonial period. Today, the cloister's patio reflects a mixture of architectural styles. Its roof tiles are reminiscent of Spanish Arabic style. The columns are finished in Renaissance elements. The initially austere and simple banister was modified several times until the construction of the one we see today. There are 33 arches that surround the inner courtyard and the columns are made out of solid stone. The original architectural complex includes an adjoining church. This building complex has been standing in the same place since its foundation in 1653 and it has been declared a protected national monument since 1975. The Rosario was founded in 1653 by the Spanish educator Cristóbal de Torres y Motones. We're here at the museum display located at the entrance and it's called Nova et Vetra, a Latin phrase that has served as the university's motto for the past century and it means both new and old. Here, in the middle of the cloister's courtyard, is the statue of the founder of the university, Cristóbal de Torres. The pedestal is surrounded by sculpted coats of arms. On the front is the coat of arms of the Dominicans, because he was part of this congregation. The coat of arms of Spain is on the west side, since it was the homeland of the founder, where he had a long career as an educator and royal preacher for the court of Spain. On the south side of the pedestal is his own coat of arms with small towers alluding to his family name Torres, which also is the same word for towers in Spanish. The cardinal hat on top and the tassels on the side show his status as the Archbishop of Santa Fe, a position appointed by the King of Spain, Philip IV, in 1634. Finally, looking towards the east is the coat of arms of the Republic of Colombia. This symbol stands here to represent the strong connection of the school to its territory and the role it has served as the first secular education institution in the country's history. The sculpture was placed in 1909 in the center of the courtyard. This bronze statue is an impressive artwork by the Spanish sculptor Dionisio Renart y Garcia, who created this work at his studio in Barcelona. To do this, he used the photographs of the oil portraits that were sent to him. The artist chose to represent his strong character visible through his face gestures, but also his generosity with the subtle motion of his hand showing the Book of the Constitutions. The Constitutions are an official document he wrote to set the rules for governing the school. And something very important here would be that the students were going to govern the Colegio Mayor and not the church or any religious order. This is something that is still in place since the elected 15 students, known in Spanish as the Colegiales, are the collegiate students that have the great honor of choosing the university president. The building complex also includes a chapel known as the Bordadita. The chapel was built in honor of the Virgin Our Lady of the Rosary, as was the college. Actually, the altarpiece of the chapel is adorned with a very significant artwork made from embroidered silk, gold and silver threads that is known as the Bordadita because of this unique technique of embroidery. This image has been part of the collection since at least 
1665, when it was first recorded in a written inventory that is also kept in the university's documentary heritage collections. The chapel has been a witness to important milestones of the university's history that have been celebrated in this same place. There's the official opening of the Colegio Mayor back in 1653 and the inauguration of the first mathematics chair in the country. This subject was taught for the first time in 1762 by Professor Jose Celestino Mutis. We can find inside the chapel a funeral monument dedicated to Professor Mutis. On the 13th of March of 1762, Mutis taught the first mathematics lesson in the country which took place at the Rosario and that's depicted on one of the memorial's reliefs. He was a Spanish scientist and physician. He would later on start a bold scientific enterprise with the main aim of researching and documenting the natural species in this territory. This is known as the Royal Botanical Expedition of the New Granada. Another scene represented in the memorial depicts Mutis and his collaborators surrounding a large tree. It's quinine, a plant that was used as a cure for malaria, and thanks to its discovery by Mutis in the New Granada, he was able to trade in Europe and make earnings that would serve him to finance both the botanical expedition and the creation of the country's first astronomical observatory. Additionally, the walls of the chapel display a number of impressive large format oil paintings depicting religious representations. Some of these were painted by artists of the colonial period, such as the local painters Baltasar Vargas de Figueroa, Gregorio Vázquez de Arce y Ceballos, and Antonio Acero de la Cruz. The walls of the cloister display memorial plaques that mark major moments of the school's history throughout its almost four centuries of existence. However, the cloister has faced different challenges, such as the historic 1917 earthquake that produced great damage to the building, especially to the cloister's second floor, which had to be rebuilt. We are now heading towards one of the most emblematic rooms of the cloister. This room was designed during the reconstruction done as a consequence of the damages of the 1917 earthquake. The Aula Magna is the main auditorium or lecture hall. The university's most important ceremonies happen right here. Graduations, election and possession ceremonies of the university presidents and the appointment of the 15 collegiate students that choose the president. This lecture hall was established by one of the most memorable college presidents that directed the university at the turn of the 20th century. His name was Rafael Maria Carrasquilla. He was in office for exactly 40 years, the longest time in office of any university president. He led the university towards its modern future in spite of difficult times due to civil wars and economic and political constraints. The Aula Magna or Aula Maxima resembles the early 20th century French style of Beaux-Arts, which drew from French neoclassicism, a style which was replicated throughout a number of institutional buildings in North and South America at this time. This style is a stark contrast with the Spanish features that characterize the sobriety of the cloister's colonial architecture. We can still see the original ceiling decorations made in plaster. Here again, we can see the university symbol of the white and black Calatrava cross. The Aula Magna is also a large portrait gallery with portraits of university presidents and relevant figures closely linked to the history of the Rosario. We can take a look at the paintings in this room and we see the transformations of the genre of portraiture from different centuries. The earliest portrait in the collection is the 1643 portrait of the founder of the Rosario, Fraya Cristobal de Torres. He is depicted with a luxurious velvet cloak hanging from his shoulders and wearing jewelry with precious stones that are status symbols that showed his condition as the Archbishop and member of the court of His Majesty the King of Spain, where he had been the royal preacher for almost 20 years. This is a full-length, life-size portrait that was painted when the founder was 69 years old. To the right of Fraya Cristobal de Torres, we can find the full-length portrait of the President Rafael Maria Carrasquilla. 
It was painted by the Colombian artist Andres de Santa Maria in 1904. To the far left is the portrait of the university president Jose Vicente Castro Silva, who spent 38 years in office. This painting was made by artist Ricardo Gomez Campuzano, a painter trained at the National School of Fine Arts in Bogota and at the San Fernando Academy in Madrid. This shows a large array of historical periods and art styles, but following one main aim. That is, to commemorate the persons that have been significant for the life of the university, each contributing in a particular way. Now let's head towards the university president's office. This is one of the most significant historical spaces, not only because of the important decisions that have been taken right here, but because of the heritage collections at display. This second portrait gallery completely surrounds the boardroom walls and shows the role of the Rosario in the country's independence. The portraits of these men act as a way of commemorating their sacrifices in order to gain the independence of the country from the power of the Spanish monarchy. At the start of the 1800s, students and alumni of the Rosario, such as Francisco José de Caldas, Camilo Torres Tenorio, and Antonio Morales, were part of the independence movement. They wanted to gain fair representation in the government and eliminate Spain's dominant rule. The office includes several portraits of these patriots. Inside the president's office, we can also find the oldest piece of furniture that has been part of the collection since at least the 18th century. It functions both as a desk, but also as a safe box, because when it opens up, there are small secret drawers where they used to keep important documents, valuable objects, and coins or other such things. The university's historical archive is home to a huge collection of documents that have been compiled throughout the history of the institution. These records are important for the study of a wide array of topics from the colonial period, the history of education, and the history of Colombia. There are, for example, student registration and grade records since 1653, and up until the early 19th century, there are records on the family origins of the students. There is also a collection of 10 incunabula, some of the rare early printed books printed in Europe before the 1500s. Even though the university had to overcome major obstacles with the difficult political and economic changes and historical events that affected the country, the university cloister is still standing. We believe this heritage embodies historical, artistic and symbolic values for the local general community at large and we plan to work towards promoting the access and enjoyment of this heritage for present and future generations. <laughs>